Hey everyone, it's Tyler, the Rustic Nerd Dad here, and today I'm going to be talking about painting Batman cowls. So, um, typically, they come in two common uh, rubber makes. So you've got urethane rubber and latex rubber. Um, typically, they're not this color. Um, usually, they're in whatever color they get cast in. Unfortunately, this one had some kind of chemical reaction and there's a level of color change, hence me painting this one to its original black. Um, this latex cowl was cast in black, which you can tell um, from the inside. Sometimes they can be cast in like a more of a cream color, and then latex paint is added on top. Um, sometimes they still add latex paint on top of the cowl uh, just to give it a different sheen, so it's not so dull looking. Um, but I'm going to be covering a couple misconceptions uh, that are out there. So, uh, Plastidip is something that can be used to paint cowls if they are latex. Um, urethane rubber, you'd have to have the right type of uh, adhesion promoter, and even then, it's not usually a good look. Um, layer, uh, Plastidip can be used as a good base layer for, you know, latex um, products. So, you know, you'd put like your uh, plastic dip down and then put paint on top of it and then put a flexible clear coat. But again, that's a lot of coating for what you're trying to do, especially on something that needs to be so flexible on the face and head. <clears throat> so I really don't recommend going the plastic dip way unless you absolutely have, have to, because there's other aspects as well. So plastic dip, if you're applying by brush, more likely to have brush streaks. If you're spraying by can, you're gonna have a whole lot of like spray texture going on. So if that's something that you want, cool beans, if not, really not the way to go. Plus it's a really big pain in the butt to clean up if you happen to mess it up. For urethane cowls, which is the most popular, um, especially these days, uh, you know, using something like Uracoat through Smooth On is pretty ideal given that that's a urethane based product so it's going to adhere to the urethane rubber better but again you can get a texture and it will create a different sheen if you're not uh, if you don't have everything set up properly and again that's something that's for more experienced users uh, what I'd recommend to the average user is Angelus leather paint so I'll have this in the description of the video um, ideally you would apply it using an airbrush, um, cause that's what you're going to, you're going to get the best, uh, coating out of. Plus you'll be able to do it in thin layers, which I highly recommend. Way too many people, when they use almost any kind of paint, tend to cake on way too much. Um, you want to use this pretty sparingly, uh, so that you get the flex. Um, but something I very, very highly recommend that before you go to paint on any mask is you do a test test swab or splotch or something. So on the inside of this collar piece, so as you can see, the collar is turned to metallic as well. Um, I went ahead and painted the inside and I've had this sitting for a good couple of months or so. Um, I don't think it's been a couple months. But I did it mainly to make sure that the flex is there and no cracking. So as you can see, none of that. And this was actually pretty, th like laid on pretty thick, um, which is thicker than I normally would. But again, I wanted to make sure it adhered properly to make sure I wouldn't have any mess up in the future when I go to do this entire thing. Um, Angelus, you can also use on latex. So it's kind of nice. So it's, again, it's a paint that I highly recommend. Um, if you have both latex and urethane, you can use it on both. Very flexible. You can get all different kinds of colors. Um, but I'm actually going to show you today in this video how I'm going to apply it um, without an airbrush. And the only reason why, honestly, that I'm comfortable applying it to this particular cowl design, <coughs> excuse me, is because there's texture. There's already an existing leather texture. So anything that I do 
that texture is going to hide most of it. Whereas this, where it's a little bit more smooth, um, I'd be a lot less likely to use a brush on, um, just out of fear of seeing like brush streaks. Um, again, if you do it right, you probably won't see it. But um, again, I highly recommend getting an airbrush. Um, the only reason why I'm not doing it with an airbrush is because mine's dead and I got to get a new one and I'm getting way too close to Halloween to not get this done. So here we go. I'm going to show you guys how I do this with the Angelus uh, leather, paint, leather paint and I'm using actually the flat black for this. So again, um, everything I use, I'm going to put in the link below or the links below in the description and you can always get some yourself. So here we go. So what I have here are two sized foam brushes, uh, one smaller one and a larger. Um, obviously the larger one for covering more space and the smaller one for covering, um, you know, more in detailed areas. And then we've got our paint. So this is a little bit tighter, so I'm going to have to get that open. Okay, now that we got that open, you can see a bit of a bubble there. But we're just going to pour a little bit sparingly on the plate here and we're going to put that back on which as you can see I got a little bit on my hand and just kind of, all right so you want to make sure the brushes are really clean they don't have any hairs on them I've got a hair on the plate I'm just going to wipe away but we're going to dab and then kind of brush most of the excess off so that there's just a little bit on not a whole lot and then we're just going to very, very lightly spread that out as much as possible. Again, a little bit goes a long way, a long way. So basically we're going to make sure those bubbles aren't in there. And again, I'm okay with, you know, using, going this method because um, the texture's there and it will have, hide a lot of these brush strokes. <clears throat> but again, you want to be as sparing as possible. And just kind of make sure all the bubbles are smoothed out. You just kind of go until it's not spreading out anymore. I'm sure you heard my dog in the background. But you just kind of go until all the bubbles are smooth. And you kind of repeat the process. Now we do have these intricate spacing here, especially for the Hernandez. And this is where I like these, as you can get right in there and just kind of smooth across in that crevice using the tip of the brush. So again, be very, very sparingly and just take your time. Again, you can use the bigger one if you so choose. Wipe the excess off and kind of cover more area. But again, it's just being very, very sparing, doing very, very thin layers and taking your time. As you can see, I'm not doing a lot. A lot of people just cake this stuff on but again, you want really, really, really thin layers and just kind of take your time with it and go as long as you need to. Again, this stuff dries really quick. As you can see, you can see a little bit of sheen here um, where I recently brushed. And then on this side, it's pretty much dried. Um, some of those brush marks are still drying. It'll be a lot less noticeable once it's all dried, but... Uh, yeah, just take your time and I'll show you what it's like when it's done. And here we go. So this is the first pass over is done. You'll see some minorly uh, shiny spots that are still drying yet. Um, and as you can see, you can see what the color used to be because I left those on purpose. Because um, obviously battle damage, I mean, it's built into the cowl in this design. So I didn't go heavy handed in those areas just to leave that. Um, but as I was painting this, I did keep in mind that doing this is actually a really, really good base coat for the next weathering steps. Cause I will be adding like some like browns and grays to the marks to make them feel a little bit more realistic and battle damaged. But again, you can bend this and it looks like I have to go a little bit more in that spot, but you can straight up bend this paint and it won't crack again provided you do not get heavy-handed and you keep it really really light and i was able to do this with like a couple small splotches and i don't know if you guys can hear that but
but I still have most of this in here. Like I'll be able to coat these pieces, which I haven't done yet, but I'll be able to coat them no problem and still have over half of this left. Again, you use very sparingly, you do not need a lot, um, depending on what you're painting, obviously. But again, I painted this by hand, like getting real close, like you really, really don't see any brush strokes. Again, that's where it's really nice that this kind of works out for this particular cowl because of the leather texture, hides a lot of that stuff um, if you really have to. And now I'm going to show a comparison of the Ruby's cowl. So this is what a Ruby's cowl looks like after a while. It gets really, really grayed out. So you definitely would want to paint the Ruby's cowl, and I definitely recommend using this Angelus Flat Black because it gives a true leather look. Again, this is paint for leather, but it would be a really, really good upgrade. Um, I might even do a video on showing the before and after of this cowl, because I'm going to do it to this Ruby's one I have left over. So, again, it is the Angelus Flat Back flat black leather paint. It is acrylic or acrylic type. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be super easy to weather this now because basically that's going to work as a base. And uh, if I decide to use um, other acrylic paints, like regular craft acrylic paints for the re like weathering and uh, doing like black washes and stuff, I could. Um, however, I'm probably going to stick with using the Angelus paint just to make sure it's done well but yeah hopefully this video helps somebody out angelus leather paint is the way to go whether it's latex urethane rubber whatever and again you don't you can do this for more than just cowls like let's say you get um urethane rubber armor pieces that um like for robin or nightwing or whatever character you can use that paint on it again just use sparingly and be smart about it so there you go. Hey everyone, I hope you've been finding these videos helpful. Um, I did get the Leather Fashion Valley Batman suit in, as well as the cape and boot spats. So I will be doing a review video on that and talking about what I'm going to be doing quickly for Halloween with the armor pieces. So stay tuned. Got a lot more content coming again very soon. And uh, keep an eye out for the next giveaway because I'll be announcing that soon too. Thanks everyone for the support and catch you again soon.